flood protection secrets the podcast to the protection against heavy rain and flooding by dr flood andreas klippa so the big challenge is how can house owners like you and me get a flood free home How can business managers like you and me get a flood-free company? And how can public servants provide flood-free critical infrastructure and livable cities? Flood Protection Secrets The podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippa This podcast is for foresighted and proactive people who do not want to shovel the muddy water out of their room while standing in the midst of the disaster. Therefore, those who design and plan, the architects and engineers need to construct such buildings and cities and that even when the entire environment is completely flooded. That is a challenge and this podcast will give the answers. Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe. Do not spend money on flood barriers now. Am I kidding? <laughs> you might think I'm, I, I'm getting totally crazy. So um, German engineer, uh, flood expert, and then this guy is telling about do not spend money on flood barriers now. That is, by the way, what I always uh, tell to people who do not decide what to do. We get uh, many increase, uh, especially after f uh, flooding issues, uh, flooding events, uh, when uh, um, heavy rain is hitting a, an area, uh, especially, especially in the Philippines uh, recently or on um, uh, April 16 in Dubai. And uh, you can see that uh, in the US and in Australia as well. The uh, news are always reporting about it. And then people are very, very nervous and they want immediately to have a price and they want to do something, but then they hesitate. And at the end, I always tell them, okay, then do not spend money on flat barriers now. So, but what is the consequence? Um, yes, it is about money, money, money. And very often the people don't know how much money do they need. How much budget do they need? Even companies, governmental agencies. I'm, I'm always curious, uh, not curious, I'm always astonished how little they know about budgeting. It is, look, if you want to, if you live in an apartment or in a condominium at the 25th floor somewhere and you dream about to have your own house with your garden and you sit on your terrace, you watch the sunset, And um, you make a barbecue with, with some friends. Or, so uh, and the kids are playing around you. So everything is, uh, is comfortable. And you, you st but you still sit in your, in your condominium in the at, the, at the 25th floor. And um, so how do you approach to this project? How do you make, it, make your dream come true? Certainly, you think about what type of, of house you have. Perhaps you make a sketch if you are able to make some drawings. Uh, you look for some pictures in the internet. Uh, you look around in the neighborhood. You perhaps you you make a trip, a weekend trip to an area with nice houses, and you look around, and then you have an idea about the the type of house, and you might say, "Oh, this house is beautiful. Oh, this garage is nice, and uh, look the beautiful flowers." And I think there's a swimming pool at the back back side of the house. Uh, it's a garden area behind the house. And um, yeah, now your dream, your dream come, comes a little bit more realistic. And uh, what is next? Um, will you will you go to the hardware store and ask uh, the salesperson, hey, how much is one piece of house? Of course not. They will look to you and perhaps uh, call the ambulance. Huh? But uh, they they will say, okay, I can I can uh, sell you the bricks. I can sell you the cement. I can sell you. Uh, glass, uh, windows, I can sell you electric cables, how many meters or kilometers do you need, I can sell you sockets, tools, all the things they can sell to you, even the kitchen and the, the light, the bulbs, uh, chairs, tables, um, all these accessories and the materials, but that doesn't make it a house. 
So for a house, you need a plan. And uh, if you are not a, a natural born architect, you will need to consult an architect. So you will go to an architect and you will tell him, okay, um, my dear friend architect, um, I want to have a house. Uh, that is my idea. Perhaps you made a small sketch, something like that. Uh, can you uh, can you tell me how much is a house? What do you think? Will this architect tell you a price? Certainly not. What this architect perhaps, perhaps will tell you is a range. But there are so many unknown questions. And the next question is, why shall the architect do that? Because you didn't give him any, any order. You didn't order anything. He is just doing you a favor by telling you something. And then the next question is, how serious is this amount? Will you take it for serious and now um, build your whole strategy how to uh, arrange your house uh, and to construct your house um, based on this number, on this amount of this architect who just told you something or perhaps you, you, you met one guy at the party yeah, but, and after, after some, some drinks, uh, the, this architect, this person will tell you, oh, the price is about 200,000 something. Uh, you can insert the currency <laughs> on your own. So uh, will you take it for serious? I think, of course not. Of course not. But then I always ask myself, why people are planning flood protection projects exactly like that? Exactly like that. And uh, at the end, they wonder because the, the budget is not enough, the money is not enough, and suddenly additional costs arise because they did not consider anything. They just go for some barriers. But that is like you purchase some windows for a house. Windows don't make a house. Flood barriers don't give you safety. Alone. It always comes with engineering. And what is a flood barrier that you install in front of your door, um, in front of a, a basement garage, an underground garage, um, in, stunt, uh, in, in front of your hotel lobby entrance, in front of your warehouse entrance, in front of your factory entrance, in front of a subway station entrance, a hospital entrance, and so on and so forth. If these barriers are not well designed, they are not sturdy enough, the thickness of the metal sheet is not enough, and the anchoring system is not well done. That means with the first wave, the barriers will collapse, or they will at least, if they don't collapse at, uh, in total, they will at least uh, uh, lose the functionality. That means they will start leaking. And uh, water is as terrible as termites are. They always find a way in, um, the termites. And the water also does. It always finds a way into your building. And then the barriers were for nothing. That means uh, the investment that you have done is gone because you get flooded. So that is the same if you just go to the hardware store and you start purchasing some windows, some cement, some uh, a kitchen and electric cables and everything and you throw to your lot and now you, you watch it to it and then you say, okay, um, now I must make a house out of it. You certainly will fail because you are not able to do that. That is not possible. So you need a planning for that. And um, um, I always say to the people, uh, do, do not spend money on flat barriers. No, don't purchase now because you are not ready to purchase. The people, very often, they simply are not ready because they don't know what to purchase. It is not that you that you just purchase um, one barrier. I need five meters flood barriers. But there is no inspection. There is no technical inspection. There is no engineering assessment. You did not assess the area. Is it possible to install these barriers? And what consequence has it? Where do you store them? Who is operating them? Um, and uh, is the ground prepared enough that you are able to install flood barriers is the foundation enough if in in case you have a two meter two meter flood barrier that means you talk about two meters water column plus kinetic energy from the waves and floating debris perhaps some floating refrigerators cars motorbikes trees whatever that makes a big boom that makes a big uh, uh, crash that is like I mention this example very often. The Incredible Hulk is boxing against your barrier and that will not withstand it if it is not well done. So you must uh, uh, use the super force for your barrier to withstand the super force of the Incredible Hulk. And that is the same. You need the super force 
to withstand the water pressure and the kinetic energy of the of the of the water and uh, then you can spend your money and that is true for companies especially when procurement departments are calling us um, they never most of the time they never did an investigation before and then of course their budget is not enough because you need the engineering work if you don't if you only consider the prices for five windows and two doors and some cables and sockets and a kitchen and a sofa television for your house and you did not consider the price for the architect and for the contractor and for fees here and fees there and for uh, for everything, you might completely fail with your budget. You, you might not, you will. Definitely you will fail. And uh, yeah, money, money, money. Um, all is about money at, at the end of the uh, day. But I, I said the hidden, one of the hidden secrets, and it's not really a hidden secret, secret is... Um, that you make a good planning. Okay, I'm I'm a German engineer and I always plan something. Germans are wa always want to plan something, but we made good results with that, didn't we? So the technology is not that bad that the Germans have uh, de developed and many others as well. But let me say it this way: intelligent engineers have developed, and um, why don't you become a little bit uh, an intelligent engineer? Um, and plan your flood protection project in a way that uh, yeah there is a is a good preparation for it. You need flood barriers, the type of flood barriers, the right flood barriers, the sturdy flood barriers, a certified flood barrier that withstand the water pressure and the if ever there's an incredible high coming along, <laughs> the 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 impact of his uh, feast. Huh? Um, when he's boxing your flood barriers. <laughs> so that is a type of flood barrier you need to know about the foundation. Sometimes to withstand uh, two meters um, water pressure with kinetic energy and wave impact, you need a, a huge foundation. This foundation is more than 30 centimeters. That is meters deep. That is like a, a, a dam is constructed, a dike is constructed. You need a, need a lot of concrete, a lot of foundation. Uh, and um, it depends, of course, on on the um, if it is freestanding on the uh, on the building if you protect the building uh, so the, and and number three it's a storage system if you have the amount of flood barriers and you have I, I don't know 120 items of of it because you have many entrances uh, and uh, two meters high or, or three meters or even four meter fifty high we can, we did it that in Canada flood control Canada installed it in Canada up to four meter fifty with um, flood barriers and uh, these uh, the amount of flood barriers by the way are certified by the world biggest insurance company and uh, please keep that in mind that you don't take the cheapest one on the market because there is a reason why these barriers are cheap <laughs> do not spend your money on these flood barriers please don't do that because it's not worth the money you you spend it it's only only good looking when the sun is shining but when the real disaster is coming you know what safety means then you why the people rely on a mercedes when it comes to safety there's a reason and is a is a mercedes cheap no it is not and there is a reason because it is engineered in a good way and that is one of the reasons people decide and go for more safety so why don't you go for more safety when it comes to the protection the flood protection of your premises of your private house of your company building of your public facility and start First, with uh, to with uh, with a planning. I call it a, a project planning, um, engineering assessment, technical inspection, things like that. You um, will need, and then you will save money at the end of the day because at the end of the day you will get a perfect solution that will protect your family, your employees, your, the people, the inventory, um, all the buildings, and your investment was well done. And with a good maintenance, it is. Ah, it will it will uh, it will help you and protect your premises it's good for the next 100 years isn't that a good investment that is why i've said don't spend money now if you haven't done the planning first always compare what you get for your money and then you will be flood safe stay safe and flood free
I wish and hope for you that you make the right decisions when it comes to your personal flood protection. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to this podcast channel if you haven't already. Now it only remains for me to wish you a good day. Do something with it. Maybe until the next podcast episode. I would be very happy. See you then. As always, stay safe and flood free. Your Andreas Klippe and the whole Flood Experts team. That's it again with a new episode of Flood Protection Secrets, the podcast by Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe, German engineer, book author, and head of the Flood Experts. What can Dr. Flood, Andreas Klippe, protect for you? Anytime? Worldwide? Contact us or just click through to www.thefloodexperts.de slash bonus. Detailed engineering. German quality. Safe. Flood protection secrets. The secrets you'll want to unfold. Don't forget, you're only one flood barrier away. Subscribe to the season and you'll never be late for an episode.